Welcome back. I'm not having a good night recording this tonight. I uh, I just got a, the first one. I said the whole thing through. Realized I forgot to hit the um, record button. The second time I went all the way through, and I was talking as we'll talk a little bit about uh, the nature of of different types of uh, edge and screw dislocations, and at least two or three times through there. I was saying edge when I meant screw, and I was saying screw when I meant edge, so I was telling everyone, telling you guys that the, the dislocations were moving in opposite senses than they should have been, and that was a real mess. So we're going to start this over. This is what happens when I do this when I'm tired. Okay, so there's two big players in the dislocation world that we need to consider. Start with the edge dislocation, because it's a little easier to visualize. Here we have a crystal, all happy. And all of a sudden, we come against this extra half plane of atoms that's sitting here. And this extra half plane of atoms, we said a dislocation is a line defect, so where's the line? Well, it's running into and out of the board, right? It's the, it's the edge of this extra half plane of atoms. And we can quantify this dislocation by considering a uh, a closure failure of what's called a Berger circuit. So we pick a point, we can make a, a loop around this dislocation, so we'll go down four, one, two, three, four, to the right four, one, two, three, four, up four, oh, I'm sorry, to the right three, one, two, three, up four, one, two, three, four, to the left three, one, two, three, and Lo and behold, we don't end up back where we started. So we'll call this vector that describes the closure failure, or from the end of our Berger circuit to the start, this is our Berger's vector. And this is a important, uh, one of the important ways of describing the vector of this location. If we basically, if we know the line direction and the Berger's vector, we know everything there is to know about uh, this particular, the particular dislocation. The other big player is the screw dislocation. And it's a little bit more difficult to visualize, but you can think of this as a ramp, as a screw. Right? It's like a the parking garage, right? This is the blacktop surface. I go around, 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 around. And I haven't left or gone up any steps, but all of a sudden I'm one level higher. Here we have a burg a closure failure of our Berger circuit or our Berger's vector that's pointing up that's basically parallel to our dislocation line. So in an edge dislocation our Berger's vector is perpendicular to our dislocation line. In a screw dislocation our Berger's vector is parallel to our dislocation line. We can think about constructing dislocations through this notion of a Volterra. Uh, construction. Imagine we have our crystal and I cut out a hollow cylinder like this. If I then make a slice through the side here, then I'm going to stick it back together. If I stick it back together and I don't align the edges up perfectly and I have an offset in this direction, this basically corresponds to an edge dislocation. Right, I have an extra half plane of atoms in here somewhere. Or an extra half plane of atoms going up and down this way. If I have an extra half plane of atoms going in and out this way, right, my ends don't close, but they're still parallel. Right? And these are two types of edge dislocations that we have. Basically, you can think of this as edge one and edge two. Right? For edge one case, we have an extra half plane of atoms here, and we end up with an offset here. For the edge type 2, we have an extra half plane of atoms here, and we have a Berger's vector this way. But again, remember our Berger's vectors in both cases are perpendicular to our dislocation line direction. A screw dislocation is a little easier to visualize here. right? I've made my cut, and now I glue it back together with an offset in the z direction. right? So now I have a Berger's vector that's parallel with my uh, 
line direction. Right, as we can see here, there's our screw dislocation. Here's our burgers vector. And then down here, this shows the notion of disclinations, which are rotational uh, closure failures. These are, we won't talk about them in this class. They're, they, they can be important in some theories of grain boundary structure. Um, but they're not important really for, mechanical, for the mechanical properties that we're going to be talking about. Now I can glue these back together imperfectly in two directions. Right? What if I have a little bit of offset this way and a little bit of offset this way? Right? Then I have a mixed type dislocation. Right? And so here I have a dislocation. Right? I've got a clear screw character. I can see that here. Over here, I've got this is an extra half plane. So my dislocation line is here. My burgers vector is parallel with my dislocation line. So I start out with the screw character. I bend around. Now I have a mixed character. At the end, I transition to a edge type dislocation where my burgers vector is perpendicular to my line direction. The thing to, that's important to remember is that the, while the line direction changes, the burgers vector does not. Right? This represents the boundary between a region that is sheared inside this dislocation with a region that is not sheared outside, and the amount that it's sheared by is the burgers vector. Sorry for the jump cut, but I got myself all tongue tied and uh, didn't want you to have to listen to um, ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, or oh. so I. Uh, cut it and we're gonna start over. So remember that dislocation theory was originally developed to explain the incremental shear of crystal graphic planes. So that means we need to describe how these defects move and how this shear is actually actually occurs. So let's start with the edge dislocation. Here's our extra half plane of atoms. So that means our dislocation line is running this way, parallel to the z-axis. Right? Our burgers vector is along the x-direction, coming this way. And we're applying a shear. Right? This is a y-x-type shear. We're pulling, pushing this way on the bottom half, this way on the top half. And as these bonds break and reform, our dislocation line is going to move this way. All right? So the motion of the dislocate the motion of our dislocation, right, obviously has to be perpendicular to the line, right? It doesn't make any sense for a line to move this way. All right? So perpendicular to our dislocation line, but for an edge dislocation, our motion is parallel with our burgers vector. For a screw dislocation, here's our uh, right-handed screw about the uh, x dislocation, uh, the x axis. It's a little uh, rotated around, so it's a little confusing. Uh, but if you think about screwing, you apply the right-hand rule with your thumb going this way. You can see this is a right-handed screw. And we apply the same shear. Here's our dislocation line. Our screw dislocation is going to move this way, all right, in a direction, again, that's perpendicular to the line. It's going to move perpendicular to the applied shear, all right. And since our burgers vector is parallel with the line, it's obvious it's going to be moving perpendicular to the burgers vector as well. Right, the screw, the dislocation line moves in the direction of the applied shear. The edge, it moves perpendicular to the direction of the applied shear. Right, if we go back to this picture, remember the dislocation uh, separates the area that has sheared from the area that hasn't sheared. So under 
a applied uh, shear stress this way, right? If I have a, a shear on the on the plane going in this direction, right? My edge is going to move this way, right? perpendicular to my applied shear. My edge will move this way. I mean, I'm sorry. My screw will move this way. My edge will move this way, expanding out the region that is sheared. So the edge is moving parallel with our burgers vector. The screw is moving perpendicular to our burgers vector. Our edge dislocation line moves in the direction of our applied shear, our screw dislocation line moves perpendicular to our applied shear. That was what got me tongue-tied. I had to go through that multiple times. I kept saying edge when I meant screw. I kept saying perpendicular when I meant parallel. Just because you know it doesn't mean you can say it. Okay. If you think, stop and think for a minute, you realize that a dislocation line can't exist by itself in a in a crystal right dislocation is the the boundary between the slipped and the unslipped region right so it either has to start and end at the interface at the surface or it has to form a loop in the crystal i can't just have a single line right a single line is is not an interface it's not a boundary right you can't have a a boundary on a map that's a that's just a line it has to have some uh, some width so in general the dislocation is going to transition from edge to screw to edge of the opposite sense to screw of the the opposite sense and this is going to expand outward uh, under the action of this applied shear this dislocation this edge is going to move this way, this one this way, the screw is going to move out this way, and this screw is going to move out this way, right? It might hit the sides and then straighten out, and we'll have two, two edge dislocations that run all the way through, or we might hit this side and then have two screw dislocations that run all the way through. But dislocation, they either have to be loops or extend through the crystal. So let's look at edges and screws individually a little bit uh, more carefully, right? So here's my dislo screw dislocation line. Burger's vector is parallel to the dislocation line. I'm applying a shear here. So my screw dislocation is going to want to move this way, but the screw Right, the, the constraint we came up with is that the the direction of travel is perpendicular to the dislocation line and perpendicular to the burgers vector. Well, there's a whole bunch of planes that it can move on. Right? So I'm not constrained, that doesn't constrain me to move if I come here to go from one slip plane to another. Right, my edge dislo a pure edge dislocation can cross slip. I mean a pure I said that backwards. A pure screw dislocation can cross slip. Edge dislocations cannot. All right? If we think about uh, the edge dislocation, well we'll we'll talk about the edge dislocation in a little bit, but we can go from a pr the primary slip plane to a cross slip or secondary slip plane. Uh, easily with screws. So screws can move around obstacles pretty easily. Right? If there's something in its path, it can just cross slip around it. If it has any edge character, it can't do this. I have to, to move uh, edges uh, move in a, a different way, which is basically climb. Right? Edge dislocations, we can't cross slip. And so if we want to change planes, we have to do something called climb, which is basically a diffusional mechanism where 
we can move a vacant, if we have an edge dislocation that comes against a vacancy, right, that vacancy can then annihilate and move up. Or we can generate a vacancy and the atom can diffuse to the extra half plane and we can get a negative climb. This 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 glide becomes uh, um, longer, right? It's a diffusion dominated mechanism, so therefore it's really strongly temperature dependent. And climb of short second sections of this dislocation uh, creates jogs in the path, and will. Um, Right, jogs are the steps that move the dislocation from one plane to the other. Right, and we can get jogs in both screws uh, and edges, but most of the time we'll be considering uh, jogs and edges because we're really we we're limited uh, uh, to change planes by by climbing. So if we have a pure edge dislocation, right? So here's screw portion, ed, uh, edge portion, and screw portion, right? Our edge dislocation is going to move in this plane. Right under the action, and our screw dislocation wants to move uh, this way. So the jogs are going to impede the motion of this uh, screw dislocation. This screw dislocation can't travel this way. Right. This is how the screw wants to move. The edge plane wants to move this way. So basically what what has to happen is the edge is going to move this way then the whole then the screw can move this way and it's changing uh, uh, changing the planes but so if we have mixed dislocations or screw dislocation jogs impede motion but it's not going to impede the motion for a pure uh, for a pure edge dislocation and we are going to stop there and move on to uh, the stress field and strain energy uh, of dislocations.